I'm thinking Sorry. about Kirby right back at you. We got a match here coming up on uh, <laughs> Tiny Little Data Stream. We got no. KJ versus Jason. Are you going to accommodate this as right back at you, DDD? I wish. Dude, I would be so down. <laughs> Yo, you need to do that with Neptune doing Yipes commentary. <laughs> the stream would just be broken, and it would just be me crying in a puddle of tears <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> You like you would just be like in the background here, and just you just like crying. you just have like a like you falling over. I need a monster! <laughs> <laughs> I need a monster to climb that damn car. <laughs> well, that's what we do best here at NME. <laughs> Enough about. Uh, well, we've got two fighters that can clobber that there, Kirby, right now. Mm -hmm. we got Fox and Mark. Yeah, Jason versus HTX KJ. Uh, KJ, we know him for that Sonic, but he's going to be uh, playing that Marth. I think that the patience is going to be really coming in handy uh, yeah. overall. And Jason, uh, one of our up and coming Fox players, recently he got uh, top three uh, at one of our weeklies. Um, yeah, he's just been on the rise. In fact, Foxes alone here have been on the rise. He yep. now made it to Grand Finals. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nearly took Grand Finals, actually, from Denti. Went to set number two. Yeah. So, we be interested to see uh, just how this Fox works um, and how, how KJ's going to use the Marth against him because it's a very infamous matchup as far as any other game goes. Yeah, uh, you know, I think uh, for KJ, it's all going to be about calm under fire. Fox is one of those characters who really thrives when that, with that rush down sort of style, really putting on the pr aggression from a uh, aerial standpoint. Right? Yes. And uh, especially at these higher percentages, you can expect him to use some aerials like the down air to go ahead and set up for some of those up smashes. For KJ, he just has to be really good with his shielding and figure out when his opportunities to punish are and capitalize on them as best as he can. Nice, using those jabs actually, swatting away Jason. He makes it back onto the stage, sweet spotting with that recovery. Yeah, I and honestly, KJ's been doing a fantastic job trying to space into Tibbers. Didn't Ooh. quite get a Tibber though, so it's not going to kill, but I mean, he's yeah, he's been very good uh, spacing. And a lot of people say that Mark uh, is just a little underrated, has potential. Yeah. Um, and I think he's like one or two buffs away from being a very good character. You know, he, uh, he definitely uh, doesn't have quite the glory days range, range, that's for sure. But especially against a light character like Fox, if he connects one of those F smashes, yeah. it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Meanwhile, Jason with a great kill with that back air. Fox is uh, one of Fox's bread and butter main uh, kill moves. Ooh. All right, going in for the dash tag. And look at this. Once again, it's I think it's a really about that pressure that we're seeing from Jason. And he's not doing it carelessly either, right? I think yeah. that he's pretty smart with some of the aggression that he's throwing out. He, Yeah, he's doing a... Yes. I was really scared. Like, even in that last interaction, you saw that KJ was stuck in his shield. Jason gets right behind him, does the back air, and then scoops him up with the up tilt afterwards, knowing that the shield grab won't work out. KJ Ooh. finally taking the stock with that aerial, but he's already at 90%. You know that Jason is looking for those down airs into up smashes. But again, I mean, he racks on a little bit of percentage, and if he gets a shield breaker read, this game's over. All right. You're right. Can KJ do it? At this point... It's looking very rough up so, air. I don't know if you saw what Jason did there um, when KJ got on the ledge. He angled his shield up to cover um, all of KJ's aerials because they all angle to where they will not hit you on the bottom unless oh, you wow. drop under the stage first. That's a really good point because they start from top and then go to bottom. Yes. In contrast to, say, the up tilt, which starts from bottom and then goes top mm -hmm. uh, for, for Jason. Ooh, nice. Mm. That Nair. Is that Nair going to do it? Yeah, he didn't have a jump, I think. I think KJ may have used his jump option to get onto the ledge. And by using that Nair, it covered a couple of options on the ledge and it happened to, I think, take the jump. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Jason is definitely good at working Fox's aerials into, um, into, ju into just doing exactly what he wants them to do. If he uh, does an up air, he's probably going to get another one after that. If he get, I mean, and he's just, uh, All right. I'm fumbling over my words, but no, what I'm trying you. to say is that Jason is very good at placing the correct aerials in the correct place. Exactly, and uh, that's clearly evident by how many up tilts he got after whiffed aerials, right? Yeah. The way that he's spacing those aerials so key to that match, but it's going to be so tricky to space aerials against such an erratic character like Sonic. Yeah, and... It, it's spacing, spacing those aerials, getting them out, and uh, you know because they all auto cancel, um, he's gonna be looking to get those up tilts out of shield just like that. Uh, yes, and here we go. Oh, good up to get out of that. Um, KJ Sonic has been. Uh, oh, the SD. I thought he would be able to recover from that, but he just kept fast falling. 
I think he might have accidentally inputted another forward air afterwards or something like that. That's possible. Yeah. That's unfortunate. So KJ's going to be up a stock now. But yeah, uh, this is going to be tough for Jason overall. I think Jason really prevails whenever he has that aggression, right? Whenever he's able to smother his opponent, that's when he really starts to find his strides and he starts to make some upsets. But it can be so tough, I think, to get in and start that aggression against a character like Sonic that is, because yeah. he's just so fast and he's always moving around the stage. Is exactly what I was thinking, is that if KJ ever gets under pressure, he can just run away and recompose himself. Oh, man. Another thing that KJ's doing is forcing Jason into shield a lot, which is something we didn't see as much in the first game. Um, and so, yeah, we're just seeing a lot We're seeing a lot of shields coming Ooh. out. Uh, Could have used one right there, but great uh, down there to up smash. And this is going to be pretty big, actually, if Jason is able to take this game, take this set, uh, sorry, from KJ. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that would be an upset. In my eyes, that would be an upset. Yeah, these two, these two are pretty good in the match. Texas? in general doesn't have a whole lot of Fox players. Um, it, 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 it comes down to, like, Houston doesn't have a lot of Fox players, but DFW doesn't have any Sonic players. <laughs> so it's really kind of a hit and miss here with uh, both of these guys as far as matchups go. Yeah. I, I, and it's worth noting that Houston uh, does, I think, from time to time see, uh, uh, well, if, if you travel to San Antonio, right, then you get to see a player like Mega Fox, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. So it, it, it's definitely a possibility that KJ has at least some familiarity with the matchup, but either Ooh. way, he's going to need to do a little bit more homework. Jason, 2 owing KJ in pools, that's an upset. That is huge. Yeah, KJ, I think he got third place at Absolute Battle. Jason, one time, got third place at a weekly of ours. Well, that's crazy, man. That is crazy. Good stuff. Really good. Very, very impressive.